one of the biggest hurdles for any new Ableton Live user is getting to grips with the two production views. Most DAWs tend to have a traditional multi-track view where we can see a timeline and a space for us to arrange our musical material across audio and MIDI tracks. But Live's a little different and when you boot the software you're faced with this view. And here we can see that our tracks appear vertically and they're broken down into a series of grid slots. This view is called Session View and allows us to work with our musical material in a unique and non-linear way. In Session View we can populate the audio and MIDI tracks with clips and then play the clips together to start building up ideas for a piece of music. But that doesn't mean we don't have access to a more kind of traditional style of audio and MIDI sequencer. Um, if you hit Tab on your keyboard you can see that the view changes to a conventional multi-track view. And here we can see that our tracks appear horizontally and we can arrange our clips in a more linear way across the timeline. So in this video we're going to look at the features of each production view in order to uh, look at the main differences and the relationships between them, starting with session view. So as we've already seen, in session view you're faced with vertical tracks uh, that are broken down into a series of grid slots. Uh, these grid slots can be populated with audio and MIDI clips which can then be triggered using the play icons that appear on the clips here. Audio clips can be dragged into the grid slots from the browser view in Live or even from Finder or Windows Explorer. And MIDI clips can be added to MIDI tracks by double clicking any of the empty grid slots. That will create an empty MIDI clip one bar in length. So in the example here I've got a number of clips spread across several tracks and I can use Session View to jam out some ideas and to add new musical objects into the mix really quickly uh, and easily. So let's try adding something new. Let's add this wind chime sample in a session view really quickly um, and see how it works with the rest of the sounds. Spend some time jamming with your clips and after you've got a collection of ideas working inside Session View, then you can start to arrange your ideas more clearly using scenes. In live, scenes are the term that's given to the horizontal rows that appear in Session View. And we can use these scenes to trigger multiple clips simultaneously using the scene launch buttons that appear on the master channel strip here. You can see that they're numbered, one, two, three, four onwards, um, and using scenes you can arrange your track in uh, pretty explicit sections and have all of the clips for that particular section being triggered with a single mouse click, which is really cool. So with all of this in mind, you can see that Session View allows us to work with our musical material in an innovative and non-linear way. And this can be awesome for songwriting and is essential for performing live using the software. 
So in summary, you can think of Session View as a musical sketchpad mode where you can experiment with your sounds and sequences quite freely um, and break your track up into sections um, using scenes. It's also the mode that we just have to use for live performance, clip triggering, scene triggering, parameter modulation. Um, and for me, it's one of the biggest selling points of the Ableton Live software. Arrangement View is, as I mentioned, much more traditional in its approach to audio and MIDI sequencing. In this view, we can arrange our clips directly onto the timeline and organize our track in a, a linear way from left to right. This view is also used for in-depth editing and ultimately finalizing our arrangement before we export the finished track. In this view, we also have access to editing tools such as clip splitting, clip consolidation. Um, we have automation lanes for parameter modulation. Whenever you produce a track in Ableton Live, your song must exist in arrangement view at some point before you can export it. Full tracks cannot be exported from session view because the arrangement isn't strongly linked to the song timeline yet. So we've discussed some of the main differences between session and arrangement view, but there's also a really significant relationship between the two views. Notice how the tracks that appear in both views are identical. So the track name, the track color, um, and even the track order is the same. So if I move a track in session view here, and then quickly tab back to arrangement view, we can see that that change has also taken place in arrangement view, which tells us there's a relationship between these two views. We can also see that we have channel strips in both views. Um, with access to parameters such as volume, panorama, send levels, these common parameters. And again, any changes that we make to these parameters in one view will be mirrored in the other view. So let's change the volume of this track here. Let's just adjust it slightly, bring it down a couple of dB, and then tab over to arrangement view, and we can see that that change has been reflected. And finally, let's look at the more significant relationship between these two views. Um, here we're going to use both views to help us make a piece of music, and we're going to transfer information that we were jamming with in session view across to arrangement view. Um, this allows us to use session view to build up and record ideas um, with a deeper sense of tactile control over our arrangement. In session view then, hitting the global record arm button on the main transport will start the session recording. So now when we start to trigger clips and jump back into arrangement view by pressing tab on the keyboard, we can see that the clip that I've triggered is being recorded into the main timeline. So let's launch another clip and then jump back into arrangement view just to see that it's been recorded. So for me, this is a great way to write tracks, and it bridges that gap between traditional kind of computer music, audio MIDI sequencing, and performance-based songwriting. So once you've recorded a full pass of clip triggering, you can hit stop on the main transport, and then we're able to review the track in arrangement view.
But very, 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 very importantly, and this is a common issue for lots of new users, in order to play back your recorded material, you have to hit this button. Um, this is called the Back to Arrangement button, and it lives at the top right-hand corner of the interface just below the Time Ruler. What happens if you don't hit this button? Live will automatically assume that you're still triggering clips in session view. Notice that all of the, the information that you've recorded in, the clips that you've recorded in, kind of appear like grayed out. Um, and basically what's happening here is that Live is assuming that you're still triggering clips in session view. And so it chooses to listen to that view instead of arrangement view. It's kind of similar to audio input monitoring in that when it's active, it will ignore the playback material. It will ignore the recorded material and just listen to the live signal. And in this case, our live signal is session view. It can be a little confusing for new users this, but just remember that whenever you've recorded something across from session view, you must hit that back to arrangement button in order to hear what you've recorded. So that's it for this video, and I really hope it's helped you guys to understand the differences and the relationships between these two production views in Ableton Live. Please spend some time working with both views um, and try to find a workflow that, that works for you and your music.